Hello and welcome to Mrs. Ballard's class. Um, this is, today we're going to talk about calculus topic 1.3, which is estimated limit values from graphs. Remember that at any time throughout the video, you can always pause um, to write down something, or you can always rewind and go back and listen to it as much as you want. Um, and there are some times that I will ask you to pause, and it's actually good to do that and actually think through the material a little bit that I'm asking you to think through. All right, so our lesson objectives for the day is, first of all, um, our, do, our essential questions are, how do you estimate a limit graphically? And how do you know when a limit does not exist? So these are the two things we're looking at. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to say, I can estimate the limit graphically, and I can identify when a limit does not exist. Okay, remember to write your first and last name up at the top of the page. Um, and I'm going to be flipping back and forth a little bit here. It's easier to write if I flip my notebook or my tablet um, backwards a little bit. All right, let's try this. So remember of last name, first name. Okay. All right. And hopefully you've written your essential question and I can down and preferably this part here in pen. All right. So one sided limit notation. So if we want to find the limit of f of x as it approaches some value c from the left side, okay, um, we will write the limit as x approaches c from the left of whatever the function name is, f of x. And that's a little minus sign that we write like an exponent, okay? And again, notation is super important. We want to find the limit of f of x as it approaches some value c from the right side. We will write the limit as x approaches c, and instead of a minus sign, we use a plus sign, f of x. So the way that I like to think about that is if we are coming from the left side, we are coming from the negative side of the x-axis, because this is left. If we are coming at some x value from the right side, we are coming from the positive side, I'm sorry, not the, the, the x-axis, so this is what it looks like from the right. All right, so it depends on what side of the point you are on. All right, in order for a limit to exist at C, um, the limit, uh, the limit, uh, sorry, limit as x approaches C from the left of f of x must equal the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x. And we say then that the overall limit, so the limit as x approaches c, so no, no exponent on it, of f of x equals L. So that's probably your more formal definition of a limit right there. Um, we're gonna study one side limits a little bit more formally later in the section here. Okay, we're gonna kind of start overall with this. Um, so what this means is that in order for, so in layman's terms, in order for a limit to exist, okay, the functions must be approaching, uh, be approaching, this is approaching the same y value as the x approaches some value c from either the left or the right side. If this does not happen, we say that the limit does not exist. Because remember we talked about that as one of our I can statements for the day, as x approaches c. Um, so does not, I miss the word not, does not exist. Does and does, or does not are very, two very different things. Does not exist. And you can abbreviate that. There's some things we are allowed to abbreviate on our AP test, and DNE is one of them. So does not exist is fine. So if you see DNE somewhere, it just means does not exist. All right. So basically, in order for a limit to exist, it has to approach the same number from the left and from the right. Okay. So let's take a look at what's going on. So we can have one-sided limits, and we can have um, 
limits overall. So if I'm looking at, it looks like we're going to the x value of 1. It says what's going on as I'm coming to it from the left side. So if I trace this function to the left, my y value is equal to 1. And then I'm going to come here to b. As I trace the function from the right, my y value is 2. And you'll notice that the, right, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not equal to each other, so that means there is no limit overall, so it does not exist. And then this last one is kind of interesting. It's actually asking me if I put this x value into the function. I'm going to erase a little bit on there just so you can see this a little bit better. Uh, if I put that x value of 1 in, where is it solid or the, where is there a y value that exists there? And it's at 2. So it's an important thing to be able to read that off the graph. All right. Oops, sorry. I'm getting a hair off there. Okay. Um, so we've got the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. So I'm going to come 1 from the left. And it kind of looks like that's the 1 right there. So I'm going to kind of put that that it looks like it's maybe, oh, um, I apparently have it graphed a little bit wrong. It looks like it's maybe 0.5. It's not or negative 0.5. It's not going to matter that I didn't graph it like my sample. Um, as I'm coming at it from the right side, it looks like my y value is going to 1. And again, my right and my left hand limits do not match, so I would say D and E. And then my X value, so I'm looking for where the X value is at one. Notice both of those are open, but look, there's a solid dot right there. And that means that the Y value there is zero. So it, uh, the value at one is zero. All right, looking at example three. So um, as I am approaching one, at the x value of 1 from the left side, it looks like my y value is going to 1. As I am approaching my y value from the, or my x value of 1 from the right side, it looks like, ooh, my y value is going to 1. So yay, my right and my left match so that I am equal to, in fact, 1. Then it's asking me where is the x value actually equal to 1. And notice that's an open dot and there aren't any solid dots there. So there is no x value of 1, so we would say that it does not exist. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So as, and we won't always approach 1. It happens to be how these examples approach 1, okay? Um, so as we're looking at the x value approaching 1 from the left side, it looks like it's, a pro, it's going to 1. Um, as we're coming at it from the right side, it looks like my y value is still going to 1. So my right and my left match, I know my x, my y value, or my y value is definitely going to 1. Um, but then again, it's asking me for the value at 1. So I'm looking for my x at 1. I'm looking for any kind of solid dot or solid curve. And it looks like there's a dot right there, which is at the y value of negative 2. Um, so you see these two were at example three and four were actually the identical problems, except for one had the solid dot and one did not. So there's just, it can be very slight differences in problems. All right, let's keep going here. So example five, as I am coming at zero, so now our x value is at zero. So I'm coming at zero from the left side, it looks like my y value is two. So I'm coming at it from the right side, it looks like my y value is two. And so my left and my right match, so my overall limit is 2. And then I need to find f of 0. So I'm going to go to 0, and I'm going to look for a solid dot or, or, or continuous curve. And it looks like at 2. So all of my answers are 2 on that one. So that does happen sometimes um, on this. OK. Um, we are looking at negative or 3 from the left. Ooh. It's going down, down, down. I don't think I can find the limit at 3. But it looks like it's going down, 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 down. And we don't really know where that ends. But we know that the last number we can always have is negative infinity. So it looks like it's going down towards negative infinity. Um, and then I'm going to come up this way. So I'm going up, 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 up. Because um, we're not going to ever cross that asymptote. We know that's an asymptote. So we know that that's going up to positive infinity. So because one's negative infinity and one's positive infinity, that definitely doesn't look like it has a limit because the left and the right-hand side don't match. So we're going to call that that it does not exist. And then also looking for a value at 3, that's th that dashed line is representing an asymptote. So there is no line at 3. So this also, or no 
value at three. So this also does not exist. Actually, we'd probably on the line, instead of saying does not exist, I should have probably written undefined. Did they have that on the other one too? Shh, no, there it doesn't exist. Either one's fine. So you can write it either way. Defined or does not exist. Okay, let's look at example seven. And if you want to pause and do one of these, uh, do example seven before I do it, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Um, so we've got negative four from the left side. So negative four is right here. Coming at it from the left side is going down, 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 down. So negative infinity. Okay. All right. And then um, from the other side, it's going down, 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 down. So it's negative infinity. But here's the catch. Yeah, it looks like the overall limit's negative infinity, but see that asymptote in there? That means my function isn't continuous. For a limit to exist, we really need the function to be continuous, and we really don't know what infinity is, so when we get it going to negative infinity or positive infinity, we really actually write that the limit does not exist because it goes on forever. Um, then it asks me to find the value at um, 4, and it looks like I didn't put one in there at all, so it looks like that it does not exist as well. Okay, let's take a look at example eight. All right, so in example eight, it looks like we're going to go ahead and flip to our calculator. Um, basically, what we're going to do and what you're going to do to show me that you've done this is you're going to um, draw a graph and make a table okay so kind of and that's going to be your proof to me that um or why that's fine that you actually put this in your calculator um, and did the work um but we're going to actually just i'm, I'm going to i'm going to probably show most of it on the um, calculator here. all right so let me get to desmos here so desmos and my first function is let me make sure that i match Oh, I've got a negative. Okay. So negative x squared or negative x. And I did a plus or minus one. Okay. Desmos. F of x equals negative x divided by, and square root is sqrt, x plus one minus one. All right. And then I want to start putting in values. Um, it said we were approaching zero. So when I start picking values, um, so I know I've got zero in them, and I can use a t-chart this way, or I could do it if you like the, the other one might make more, might make more sense. Let me do that. Um, I could go this way. I know my middle value has to be zero. Um, so I need to pick a value just to the left of it. So just to the left would be like negative 0 0.001 and then negative 0 0.001 0 .001 and negative 0 0.1. And we usually test three in each direction. Um, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0.1. So those are the values that I would put in. And of course, we would call it x and f of x or y or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the, all the values in the calculator. I'm not going to type them up on the notes. Okay. So let's start with f. That's not the right f. f of negative 0.1. All right, so we're going to write in one negative 1.94, okay? And then I'm going to add a zero in there. Actually, I will put, I'll put them in the table. Negative 0.9914, put another zero in, and I get that. And then I'm going to go the other direction and take off the negative sign, and I get negative 2.04, put in another one zero, and it keeps getting more zeros in it, okay? And then this is the sketch of the graph. So I'm going to add that those things to my tape or to my um to my notes. So I've got negative 1.94, negative 1.994, negative 1.9994, and then this direction I probably did not leave myself enough space. Um, 2.00 whatever, 2.004. 2.005. So it looks like my y value is definitely getting to, it looks like two on both sides. And again, to prove to me you did this, the graph in the calculator, it also doesn't hurt to go ahead and just sketch the graph really quick, which looks something kind of like that. All right, let's keep going. 
Um, so the next one, if I was going to put this in my calculator, um, it would be a little bit trickier. Okay, so let me show you what to do with this one. Oh, let me see, is it the same numbers? Two and zero. So it's two when x is equal to negative one. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get rid of what I had, and I'm going to say that f of x, no f, uh, caps lock off, f of x um, equals one, and I'm going to say when x, let's see if it is, uh, I don't think I can do not equals. All right, let's just go one, and then, so the catch is, is that it says that we can't equal not one. Yours was two. I'm looking at, I changed it up from the problems I'm looking at here. Yours was two when it equals and does not equal negative one. So that means there's a, but it said it was zero at negative one. So I'm going to put the point zero, negative one in. Nope. What did it say? It's zero at negative one. It's zero when x equals, no, it's negative one the other way around. Negative one, zero. And I think I have a typo in there. Actually, I think it should be two zero, no. It should be zero, two, no. 